Hi, I'm Phil Harbottle and this is my uh, fifth video about the genesis of the 1950s British science fiction paperbacks. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, rivals of Vargo Staten, which emerged from other publishers. Now, the main author who emerged in competition to the uh, Vargo Staten books was a publisher called Curtis Warren. Now, Curtis Warren used the same tactics of all the Mushroom publishers that they commissioned one of their regular writers of Westerns. And here we see a Western by Morton T. Cain, who was actually a, a, one of the many pen names of Dennis Hughes. Now, Dennis Hughes's first book was published in 1948 and was a sort of Dick Barton thriller, a very good book. Uh, it was an espionage thriller, like a detective story. And then his publisher asked him to try Westerns, which he did very successfully. And then the, West, then the uh, publisher asked him to try science fiction in competition with the Skyen series. And here we see the books published it from October 1950 um, through to about uh, autumn of 1951. And you'll see the difference with the Vargo Staten books. The cover art, I think, is, is dreadful. Now, there's some, some readers, my, some, some, some collectors, Actually like, actually like these covers. They think they're very good. They're sort of retro. The Americans call them cool. I think they're bloody awful, but never mind. That's just my opinion. But they're certainly not, they're certainly not uh, Ron Turner. And they give a very bad impression, I think, of science fiction. And that's why it got its bad reputation. You see the plastering of the, the title science fiction this is science fiction. Well, this is mad scientists. This is silly aliens and monsters. It's, it's dreadful. But never mind. That's what the mushroom publishers went. They went for the lowest common denominator. Anyway, because they were quite successful, people were buying them. And as I said, they hired this uh, one author who had never done science fiction in his life before, Dennis Hughes. Now, Dennis Hughes was quite a talented writer, but the thing was, he only had 10 days to write the novel. The publisher insisted that he sent the books back within 10 days, and they all had to be based on these covers, which the publisher prepared the covers beforehand. He prepared the covers, he prepared the titles, silly titles, Planet X, Hostile Worlds, Space Flight. Uh, so the poor author had to write, write each book inside 10 days and he had to include the ridiculous cover scenes in his novel. And it was an impossible task. So the result was that this entire series of books are utterly mediocre. Apart from the first two, um, which, although they had these unlikely outlandish covers, Hughes was such a clever writer that he actually managed to explain and incorporate these ridiculous scenes into his book. And the best part of the book is how he actually works the covers in, into his stories. But where you had a dreadful cover, such as this, he had a, there was a, the result and it was a pretty dreadful story. And the thing was, because he wasn't steeped in science fiction, uh, Hughes at first was only using the trappings of science fiction. And it was all very juvenile and very unfortunate. Now, here you see another practice of the mushroom publishers. Because, as I explained, that had the same number of pages in each book, they couldn't go over the pages. 
Occasionally, the printer would discover that the author's manuscript was too short to fill the pages, so you can see the change in typeface. From small typeface, with uh, no, no spaces between the paragraphs, to the larger typeface, with big spaces between the paragraphs, in order to fill it up to get to the requisite number of pages, which at first was 128 pages. Now, Curtis Warren had one other writer assisting Hughes in producing these books, who were published at a rate of about two or three a month, and that was a writer called David Griffiths. Now, David Griffiths was actually a science fiction fan. He was a young author, he was working for Curtis Warren as a reader, and he used to frequent the uh, the meeting place of the London Science Fiction Writers, which is the White Horse Pub, which we'll talk about in the next video. Now, Griffiths was a young writer, he knew science fiction, but he was under the same handicap as Hughes. He had to write his, each novel to explain the ridiculous covers by a dreadful artist called so you can see his signature on an ease, Ray Theobald. Uh, and the covers there, there's his name, Ray Theobald. And his idea of science fiction was straight out of Flash Gordon and his comic strips. I mean, in this one, for instance, look at this a sort of mad scientist there. He's setting fire to his hand with a Bunsen burner. He has, he has to be a mad scientist. He's holding his hand in, in, in the Bunsen burner flame. And uh, some of the attempts at advanced scientific machinery, like a big sort of clock handle, it's ridiculous. Um, and these covers were the antithesis of Ron Turner's covers. And the poor author had to incorporate these ridiculous scenes into his into his books and explain them and his, his novel had to reflect the, the title chosen by the publishers. Um, now then Griffiths only had 10 days to write each book the same as the same as Hughes and the result was pretty dreadful. Uh, despite his knowledge of science fiction he had to he had to incorporate absurdity into his narratives so that the end result was pretty dreadful. And this caused quite a stink in science fiction uh, fandom because they were horrified at these books appearing on the, on the stand. But of course they still sold to the general public because of the newfound popularity of science fiction. So they continued. But Things were about to change with Curtis Warren and David Griffiths, the author of these mediocre novels, was the, to be the catalyst. Uh, and how this came about and how it, it caused an improvement in the Curtis Warren production, I'll explain in my next video.